Okay, we'd like to welcome you to Fabric Chicks FaceTime um, Facebook Live at noon. Um, we are going to be interviewing Penny Barger today, and she is um, Peggy and her husband Rich are helping us out. Hang on a second, girls. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to them. Um, all right, so hang on a second. Here we go. Here is um, Double Trouble. Um, Penny, uh, look at you guys aren't watching, so. Um, so nobody's there to tell me like what I need to do. Oh, yeah, I know. Penny's usually the one who tells me what to do. Peggy, oh, Peggy, Peggy, well, text me. Peggy, yeah. And I'm Peggy. Okay. So remember, hi Louise, hi Mary Lou. Um, so we are um interviewing Penny, okay. and Peggy's gonna be helping her out on raw edge applique, and we will post in our fabric chick stitch along on Facebook if you're a member. If you're not, just um, click on the left hand side of our page and we will um, admit you in and um, we'll be posting some handouts that Penny emailed me. So, all right, Penny, go, take it away. Hi, my name is Penny Barger and I am going to demonstrate on my technique on doing raw edge applique. Uh, first, I'm gonna show you a few quilts that I've made recently um, using that technique. This quilt that Peggy's holding up, I used all batiks. Okay, so remember that. This was all batiks. The polka dots Very are batiks easy. too? Huh? Yes. The applique? Oh, oh no, these aren't batiks. Yeah. But all the applique is. Batiques. Okay, okay. Okay, I just want to, and uh, can we get a close up of yep. like the lion? I just want everyone to see you don't see any stitching. This is raw edge applique. Now I will show you, that sells the greatest panels, okay? And I'm gonna show you, I fell in love, I fell in love with one of the panels and made five of them. And they're all different. And this one is, can you, can you back up a little bit, Rich, so people can? And this one, I applique dragonflies. And I applique, I fussy cut out these birds out of fabric mm -hmm. that I treat it with Terio Magic. Terio Magic, if you are not using a batik to applique, treat your fabric, your cotton fabric, with Terio Magic, and it'll prevent the edges from unraveling and raw edge applique. I treat all my cotton if I am going to do that. With Terio Magic. Perfect, and me I'll go too. Over that. Yes. And for example, let me just quickly give a demo on this. Okay, Linda I Patterson say, said hello. Hi, Linda. So Hi, Linda. I treated this with Terio Magic and then I fused the back. Okay. okay. This so is with Terio Magic. With the Terio Magic, with the Terio Magic, yeah. that helps so that you don't have fraying. Yes, no okay. fraying on the edges. It's fantastic. Terry, the owner of it, has a wonderful YouTube on how to do it. Yes. Beth, I'm sure, sells this. I definitely I, do. I, I can't go without it. I love it. So let me go back to my quilts again. And, and excuse me if we're not perfectly taping this, but... Uh, everybody who watches us, Penny, knows that we're amateur videographers, but we're full-time quilters. Okay, thank you. And so this is regular uh, fabric. You don't see any fraying around the edges. And this is a, uh, this is a batik. And I took the same panel and did it with a different border. So it looks totally different. Here's another one, the same, I'm showing you all the same panel. Best sells the best, best panels. I have a blast with these panels. Okay, um, here's another one. Some of these birds are batik. This one's a cotton. This one's cotton. This one is um, Aborigine fabric. Okay, so that's another one. But this is, I, I'm showing you how you can liven up the same panel and do something. It's amazing. I sold her out of these panels because I just love these, this panel. That is a true statement. 
Well, I yes. showed everybody what you were doing with them, and we sold out the rest of them. Uh, yeah, I love this panel. And when you quilt it, the thing is, what's so nice about a panel, if you don't mind me going sidetrack a little bit, but the nice thing about a panel is they're so easy to quilt because you just follow the lines of the design, and it almost makes it look three-dimensional. So it's, it's a lot of fun. You don't have to be a big experienced quilter. So now let's go back over here. And I'll tell you some of the things I do. I save every bit of my leftover fabric, especially if it's been pre-fused. I love dragonflies. And I got this fabric from Fabric Chits. Most of my fabric comes from Fabric Chits. <laughs> on the back for fusible right yes okay i use light steam to steam too that's the only thing i like me too because and the reason why i like it is it's almost like playing with color forms remember when we were kids and we played with color forms and the reason why i like it is if i put something down and i don't like where i put it i can just lift it up and move it until you iron it once you iron it you're committed yes well once you're iron it you are committed, but if you go over it with a warm iron again, yeah, it will peel off. Oh, I've never tried that. I'll have to. Yeah, you just, you know, just, just, you know, don't press on it. Just put your iron on it so it warms it up. Okay. And it will come off. You might have to work at it, but you can do it. Okay. So, um, so that's essentially how I prep my fabric and how I cut it out. And sometimes if you're not an artist and you're saying, well, how did she get these shapes and all this? And you don't have an AccuQuilt machine. And Beth, by the way, you should start selling AccuQuilt. I know. But anyway, <laughs> I love it. I got it. I'm having so much fun with it. I even designed a die. But anyway, so um, you go and go on the internet or get a picture or whatever and you can um, print it out, put a piece of clear plastic on the top. If it's a busy picture, you only want a certain part of it. Trace around it to simplify the shape. Then take your plastic, put a white piece of paper underneath it, put it in your printer and print it out when you have your pattern. So I also have that in the handout if anybody needs that. So are there any questions at this point? Nope, I'm reading them to you as they come. I think they're just, oh, okay. they're soaking it in. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine. Okay, I've set up two of my sewing machines so I can jump from machine to machine. And right here, I have already pressed on a butterfly onto my fabric. Now, if you use, like I said, I use um, regular cotton 
fabric, treat it with Terio Magic. If you treat it with Terio Magic, you don't have to use a stabilizer. Okay? And then I put the fusing on the back, the steam, steam tube, and pressed it onto the fabric. So did you okay. use Terio Magic on your background block or just on your applique? Just on my applique. Okay. And you, okay. you don't have to use a tearaway stabilizer on the back? No. Okay. Now, what thread do you use to do your... Well, I, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm getting to that. <laughs> so that's a good question, but I haven't gotten that far yet. Um, so now I'm at my machine, right? And what I have here is um, I have in my bobbin, I use pre-wound. I like pre-wound bobbins when it comes to monofilament. I use Superior's pre-wound bobbins in, in the bobbin. And I use YLI thread on the top. And the reason why I use YLI thread, the monofilament, is because it's not shining. Okay? okay. And see, you can see here, this is this one I just did this morning. Mm -hmm. And you don't see any shining. Right. Correct? And that right, that's good to know because I don't like monofilament typically because it does have kind of that shiny glare when the light hits right. it. Right. So that's good to know the YLI is doesn't have that glare. Right. And if anybody wants to try this technique, I'm sure Beth can put a little kit together for you with all these materials. For sure. <laughs> <You know. laughs> I've known Beth for years and yeah. years since she was a kid. So Well, I still anyway. am a kid. Um, so you still are a kid, that's right. Mary Beatty, so it is monofilament, but it's superior monofilament in the bobbin. That's on a pre-wound bobbin. Yes. And I don't have to worry about winding it. It's all done. And one bobbin lasts forever. Right. Literally. Right. It lasts you a long time. So then I go over to my machine, and I'm just going to go over how I've set everything up. First of all, I'll go over to my machine, and I will put my, um, I'll go to my zigzag stitch, okay? And on this particular machine, it's five. And then I will. Uh, YLI turn the... is just the brand of thread. Yeah. I don't think it stands for anything. It's just the name. Right. Right. It's it's YLI. I don't know what it stands for. Right. I've only it heard is... it referred to as YLI. Yeah, it's the company. And then I put your stitch width and your stitch length. I do it at least 1.5 and 1.5. Sometimes I'll go down to 1.0 and 1.0. But you don't want to go over 1.5 and 1.5. I turn my tension down to 2. So even and though you're going to be doing free two. motion, are you doing free motion or are you doing a zigzaggy stitch? No, 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 no. I'm, I've got, I'm doing free motion zigzag. You'll see. Okay. I've got my free motion foot on here. All right. My tension's at two. YLI on top. Superior clear monofilament on the bottom because they sell the pre-wound. 1.5 and 1.5, but you can go down to 1.0 and 1.0. Then um, I use my open toe foot, but I do not lower my feed dogs. You keep your feed dogs up. Okay. okay. Any questions? No. Okay. So now I'm going to show you. And can you get really close into this, Rich? Perfect. Okay. So now I've got everything set up. And now I'm going to quickly do this. You don't even have to because you're using this. I will turn occasionally because I like to sew forward, but. And I'm not doing it perfect. It doesn't matter. I've shown quilts and shows. And in fact, one woman, um, one judge told me my 
hand applique was so excellent she couldn't see the stitches. Well, I don't hand applique, so <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. I, well, I think that and, that says something about the judging. <laughs> yeah, that too. But if you're looking, if see how quick I'm doing this? Yeah. It doesn't take long at all. And you don't see, and this is with cotton fabric. Like I said, this is not with petite. This is cotton fabric I'm doing this. And I'm not going crazy. I, ha I could use a magnifier on my machine, but why? You know, I can see this fine. Because I don't care if it's perfect because you're not going to see it. Right. Mary B, it, it is a preset zigzag, but also using the free motion foot. So it's kind of like free motion and... Yes. A, a preset stitch, which I've never seen before, Penny. But leave it to yeah. Penny. Penny Penny will um, step outside of the box and invent her own way. Yeah. Yes, Marilyn, you could totally do this with the quail, and it would go much, much, okay. much faster. Yeah. See how quick I did that? Yeah. it's all done. So I'm going to take it off the machine. Do you see the stitching? No. Okay, I'm gonna turn it over and show you what the back looks like. Can you see the stitching? Yeah, you can see the holes, but you can't see the thread. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's the back. And that's it. And that's how you do it. Now, I have another one over here. I'm gonna set this machine off. And on this machine, I have a batik. Okay, girls, okay. we'll do a kit for this technique. Um, oh, Kimmy says, Mom, it looks great. Hey, Kimmy, how are oh. you? Um, we'll put together some kind of a kit so you girls can learn the technique. Yeah. And, yeah, it was, it's, it's, and like I said, Beth has the handout of it. And, um, now, see, I'm turning my machine, I'm turning this thing down. To 1.5 because I'm on a different sewing machine right now, and 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 I you I have Janome's, but it doesn't matter. And the feed dogs are up. Remember, it's important. Free motion foot, feed dogs up. Okay. Okay. And I've already threaded this. So and most people, it, I've always learned, Penny, that if you're doing free motion, you don't really have to adjust your stitch length because it's just how fast you're moving it. But but that, you're because you have the because you have the most people who do free motion lower the feed dogs. Uh -huh. Now I've called like five different companies. I emailed and yeah. said by not lowering the feed dogs. Will that hurt my machine? They said, absolutely not. Okay. Lowering the feed dogs makes everything looser. Right. I right. don't want everything looser because I want to be able to have con some control. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I leave my, when I thread paint, I leave my um, feed dogs up as well. So this right here, this is a boutique. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, and I'm not using a stabilizer. I just used the steam to steam. And now I will demo on how I do this one. See? And it's working fine on this. But see how fast I can go? Yeah. You know? And it's okay if it's not perfect. Because you're not going to see it. Right. But you want to get it. You want to get it. I go fast. This is how I do it. I don't, I don't want to spend all my time, but see, it's not perfect, but right. that's okay. Right. Because you can't, like I said, you're not going to see it. Anybody can do this. It's, it's, it's fun. And like I said, if you make a boo-boo or something on your quilt, you get something on it, you know, the cat comes and does something and the dog poops on it. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know what, Penny? I mean, it could happen. I was doing a live, um, I was doing a live Facebook showing people how to paint fabric, and a bird pooped on my fabric. Ah, oh, oh Lord! I, I remember that. Yes. Yeah. Like I couldn't even recover from it. 
See, if you look really close, do you see any of the stitching? Nope. You can see the holes, but not the thread. You can see on the back. Yeah. yeah. And a little bit, you have to really, really look. Right. I think and it's because we're up so close. We can see. Yeah. Yeah, where the and, needle and went in. You, and when you quilt it, you don't see anything for sure. Right. You know? Right. But, and like I said, all those quilts. I applique like this. I applique like this all the time. It just gives me more freedom. Right. And, um, and it's a good way of covering up mistakes. Yes. So, but the most important thing is to remember is to turn your, your, um, okay. Tension. This is it. Because. Turn your tension into your zigzag. You've got your free motion foot. You're going to do it at least 1.5. 1.5 you're not going to do any bigger stitches than that you can go down to 1.0 and 1.0 monofilament superior in the bobbin uh, bye diana on the top pardon but diana had to leave she's going to watch it later oh okay sorry I mean, that was good about the free motion foot because i didn't use it and i fought all the time so that, doing that yeah, yeah. that's great and then um <laughs> And, it, and you want to use a, uh, between, a, I, I happen to like the superior titanium needles, but you can also use extra sharp needles. Mm -hmm. And I would, um, and make sure that uh, it's a 70 or an 80. When you're doing okay. This. So typically, the when you're the needle, the bigger the hole. Yes. So typically, when you're doing thread painting and you're using different weights of threads, you you use like a ninety so that you can thread it. Yes. But but for the monofilament, you want a seventy. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Seventy or eighty. Okay. And and I like I personally like superior top stitch. Okay. And then there was something else I was going to say, and now I forgot. Oh, I know. If your machine, some machines don't like monofilament in the bobbin. Right. So, if, if that's the case, that's okay. You can still do this technique. Because if you use, and I think, Beth, you sell some of Wonderfill. Uh-huh. And they have this color. They have Invisifil. Yes. And you can use also... If you use a champagne color, it will disappear. Line, yeah. Or one fill, uh, they're 100 weight. You can use this in the bobbin. If your machine does not like monofilament in the bobbin, use a champagne color like this. It will act like it's invisible. Right. Right. And I use this. I use this particular thread, bottom line, top end bobbin, to do all my piecing, so I don't have to keep changing threads. It blends with everything. Right. Yeah, Peyton. Right. A gift from me to you, Peyton. Oh, Peyton. you're so oh. generous. Um, I am. So with, I am. with the 100 weight um, Invisifil, do you have to not fill your bobbin completely full? I've never I, paid attention, but when I was ordering, they said that you should only fill it 75% so it doesn't get it the bobbin too heavy uh, because it's so fine. Yeah. But I've never and, had a problem. Uh, well, I haven't either, but I also buy pre-wound. I'm lazy. Oh, okay. You know, just be because the only thing, but with Superior, I, well, with, I take that back. With, when I'm not using monofilament, if I'm using bottom line or the 100 weight, yeah. I just wind it. I right. Don't have a problem. Right. Yeah, so me that neither. Has not, so I guess you yeah. would just, if you have a problem with your machine, then just don't wind your bobbin so full. But I've never experienced a problem with the Wonderfill. Um, Carolyn, on the top, she has YLI monofilament and then superior monofilament in the bobbin. And then Connie said, oh, oh dear, they're going to town with your poop happens. Um, um, and Kimmy says, once it's sandwiched, you can't see the holes, which I think is, is very true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And um, so for those I, of you that are just joining us, that, um, we're interviewing Penny Barger today, and Peggy and her husband Rich are there helping to film it. And Penny is an amazing artist. 
Um, she has a website you can go to, which is Penny, P-E-N-N-I, Barger, B-A-R-G-E-R, -E all one word, dot com. Okay, Penny, do you have some show and tell for us? Well, what do you want to see? I don't know, something that you've done. Something I've done? Yes. Well, let me, for your dolls. Um, oh, my dolls. Show your dolls. My dolls, dolls are all over the house. Oh, so, uh, you, you girls just saw on the last Friday sale, I showed on my phone some of her, um, the latest doll that she made. Oh, yeah. I, I love my dolls. I have a lot of fun with dolls. Let me get... Do you um, do pre-filled bobbins fit all machines, or do we have to get them special for the different machines? You know, you know, um, best, you know, best, um, you know, best. Peggy brought up she can't use pre-wound bobbins in her um, Nina. her Nina. Right. I've only tried once, and I did not have any luck, and I've never tried again. Oh, that's super. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. and, it's, and it's all fabric. I mean, cotton. cotton. There's no fatigue in there. Mm -hmm. And you can't see. See? You can't tell where I... Right. Right. You definitely don't see the thread. Right. And it makes it fun because it, you can finish it. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Um, but this whole thing was done uh, with that technique. Mm-hmm. We do not have YLI threads at the moment. I wish when I was going to interview people, they would tell me what they're going to talk about. But I will order it today when we're done. And I will. I probably won't have it by Friday sale because it's already Wednesday. But we'll have it for the next Friday. And then we'll put together some kind of a kit. And maybe we might even talk um, Penny into teaching a class on Zoom with us. There's so much you can do with it. I can't tell you how many times, lots of times, I prep fabric. I have a huge, a huge um, um, container of fused fabric, pieces of fused fabric. If I'm making something else and I see a really cool fabric, I'll quick fuse it and put it in my container, uh -huh. and I have it, and I can quickly uh, make a design and uh, applique it on something, you know, and I can't tell you how it just, like your borders, for example. Uh -huh. borders Can you guys hear are, now? They said they can't hear, it's muffled, but I think we haven't done anything different. Huh. Can you guys hear now? Out? Like, I can hear Penny. Is your finger over the speaker? No, I'm holding it very carefully. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay, can you girls hear, can you hear us now? I don't know. Nobody's responding. Oh. Well, oh, they can hear us now. Okay, go on. Carry on. Okay. Okay, let me think. I forgot what I was saying. This is what happens when you put together and you forget. Um, well, and we keep interrupting you. Borders. People tend to want to put plain borders around their quilts when they do it. I don't like plain borders. I think borders need to have interest something on there and that's why i'll put oftentimes an applique or something even a little bird in the corner or um something a flower or something to break up the monotony of that border and this is one quick way of doing it as well so i mean it adds interest and it's like the um the panels i showed you there are four panels but each one each quilt looked different and it's mainly because you just add little applique things and it brings it to life. So, um, you know, so that's that. <laughs> All right, I think we're done. I don't know. Are we done? Does anybody have any questions? Or, like now Beth can put together a kit and maybe uh, Beth, you could put together in the kit which might help is some of your fabric 
that has some of your characters or something on it. And right. And people can fussy cut them out after they've used the Terrio magic on it and then ironed it on the steam solid, the steam to steam too, mm -hmm. right? They'll iron that on after they've done the Terrio magic and, um, and then cut it out and then applique. So it'd be, a, that might be a good idea to put something like that in the kit that they can fussy cut out. Perfect. Well, I'll get together with you, but um, I think if we if I tear real magic it for them so that they can see and then put one, you know, because usually when you get the pre-wound bobbins, you buy a whole bunch of them at a time. So if I just put one in each kit so that yes, they can see if it works with their machine. So if you guys yeah. are interested in taking that, um, that class, um, let me know and we'll put you down on a list and we'll contact you for, you know, in the future. If you could even use some of your flower material, they could cut out and fussy cut around the corners. Definitely, yes. I think well, it'd be fun. Yeah, because you have a lot of, um, well, you know that um, Halloween panel that I got? Uh-huh. I got that out. I'm going to treat the whole panel with Terrio Magic. Uh-huh. Okay. And again, if you're doing, I'm going to give a quickie demo on how I do the, um, I'm going to pretend, hold on one second, okay? Let me grab a piece of fabric. Here's a piece of fabric, okay? Okay. If I'm going to treat this with Terrio Magic, it's cotton. Um, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to spray it, okay? This, this bottle's empty. I'm going to spray it. I'll so just pretend like there. there's a mist coming out of it. And I know. And Penny, you know what I actually like? Um, I put my Tyrael Magic in a mister because it sprays it more evenly instead of sometimes yes. in that bottle it will be a little bit blotchy. Yes, that's a good idea. But the whole idea is to have a bowl there too because I make a mess. Me, and yeah, me spray, too. spray it and then scrunch it up, spray it some more, scrunch it up. That way you don't waste it. Right. And do it to get it. You know, all it's all covered, and you'll see. You can go like this, and you'll see if it's dry spots. Mm -hmm. And just squish it together. Put it outside for a couple minutes. Bring it back in. Iron it. And it'll feel a little stiff. Yes. Okay? It won't be super stiff like they do when they make the flowers and stuff, but it'll just be a little bit stiff. Press it. And you can actually use a steam iron on it, too. It won't take it off. And then put it on your um, steam to steam. Iron your steam to steam, too, on the back of it. And then go ahead and cut out what you're going to cut out and go from there. But uh, one of the things to remember is um, when you can wash it, after you've sewn it, it's done. And when you wash that quilt or whatever you've done, if you have to wash it, it'll go back to being soft, but the in edges won't have frayed. Right. That's the nice part about Terry Imagine. So I, I do use that a lot. and But it allows you to be a lot more creative, too. Right. And, you know. And then if you're, another thing, too, is if you're doing a, um, Big project, some of my quilts are pretty big, and you don't want to have to um, do the whole piece with the material magic. What I'll do is, for example, I have a quilt about Vietnam, and I had a big soldier going across. Uh -huh. Well, I um, just... Wait, wait, tell, the tell Rich to move his finger. There. Move your finger. Do you have that quilt to show us? Do you have that quilt to show us? It's one of my favorite quilts. Yeah, that's okay. one of my favorite okay. quilts. I'll let Peggy entertain you while I go. Okay. So for those of you who are just joining us, we're interviewing Penny Barger, who is an amazing quilt artist. And um, Peggy, who is also amazing, is there helping her. And Peggy's husband, Rich, is doing the filming. Okay, wait, what are you pointing at? <laughs> This is one of Penny's pastels that she painted. Oh, amazing. So she also paints. Or 
Well, pastels are more like chalk, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, but I do think she paints. Yeah, she paints, does jewelry, uh, dolls. makes dolls. Rich, is your hand on the um on the microphone on the phone or iPad? No. Okay. I'm trying not. No, it's good not. now. It's good now. Okay. I know it's this, kind of. Uh, can you see it? Yes. This quilt has a lot of meaning to me, and it's a personal meaning. Anyway, um, being a nurse, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you can use your imagination why it would mean a lot to me. But anyway, um, I used that technique I showed you around the faces. I applicate all my faces on with that. And you don't have to get too, too close. And then... So do you do your thread work on the faces separately and then put them onto the quilt? Yes. Okay. I applicate it all on with that technique. So that entire face is done with a billion different thread colors for shading? Yep. Yep. Oh my gosh, that yep. is incredible. And, uh, yeah, it's got a lot of meaning to me. Are one of so, those you? Huh? Are one of those people you? Yes. Which one is you? It's the daughter. It's my daughter. She modeled for me. Okay. Supposed to be me. <laughs> gotcha. Sure, John. Sure, John. Oh, here's John. No, stay there, John. Ah. Oh, yeah. Stand next to you. Will you take Do I need to put a mask on? See, yeah. Well, no, because we're family. No, I do. Sorry. Oh, oh. So, this is my husband, John, who's so supportive. He's the most wonderful man in the whole world. That's beside wow. the point. Anyway, and this is the thread painting I did of him. Now, I applicate him, his face, on to this background using that method that okay. I showed everybody. And you really cannot see the thread that it's attached, that's attaching it to right. the background. Right. And, and the reason why I do it that way... Is this mustache dimensional or is it just the different colors of threads? It's the different colors of threads. Oh my gosh, it looks so dimensional. That is incredible. The shading and everything. And, um, but see, this is all applicated onto the background. Because that way you won't have any kind of wrinkling or anything like that. And you're not going to wreck it. Because, to be honest with you, lots of times if I'm doing a portrait of somebody, I want it to be perfect. I'm kind of OCD when it comes to my portraits. And so I'll do it maybe two or three times until I get it right. Right. The way I want it. And, and I'm my own worst enemy. Yes. But, and, and I don't want to wreck all the backgrounds, all that fabric. Mary Beauty, the, the flesh is not painted on. The flesh is entirely thread. Billions and right. billions in stitches and thread. That, everything's thread. Is that right. any that on that on that quilt there the Vietnam one? Did you paint that sky? I painted the sky in the yeah. background. Yeah, on the Vietnam quilt. Yeah, she painted that. Hold that up. She painted that like the best how you paint. Yeah, she painted that sky on that. Yeah, I painted my own sky. That and, is incredible. Yeah, well, we did it in the backyard. Yeah. Yeah, John helped me because I had to do it so fast because it was like a hundred and something out and before the paint dried and we were running before around. The sprinklers went on. Uh -huh. Yeah. And did and you put so, it in a frame to paint it or did you just paint it on the ground? I took I took a, a table. I covered it up with old plastic garbage bags. Right. You know, the garbage bags. I got a pump spray. I got my paint. And I just, I just used Jaquad paint and a big brush and just went to town and had John stand next to me spraying. Keeping it I wet, went. yes. Yeah. Because it was 
so hot out that day. Right, and you've got to keep and the fabric wet so that it will blend, so you don't get yeah. big splotches. Yes, mm -hmm. and I'm the type, when I get, when I'm motivated to do it, I've got to do it right then and there when the <clears throat> urge hits me, you know? So, um, and that's how we did the sky. But everything else is fabric and thread. And I don't like buying, I don't like pre fabric skies myself. Right. So, but they do have a lot of nice fabric out that has that. Mm -hmm. So, and I used to show a lot in shows, but I've kind of don't do that much anymore well, you in the past re year. Re you couldn't recreate that. I could recreate Well, it wouldn't be the same because if it was all pre associated. Oh, uh, yeah. And, uh, but I know what colors to put on, what to blend, that kind of stuff. So right. it, it, that helps. So, and that's the whole thing too, that people have to understand you're only working with fabric. It's okay to do it again. Right. Beth has lots more fabric she can sell you if you screw it up. It's <laughs> for, not for sure. And I think that's people's biggest fear is they're afraid of, of making a mistake or messing up their fabric. And really, you're working with a small piece of fabric. If you mess up, it is not the end of the world. And you have to experiment to find your greatness. That's right. And, and you can't make a quilt for a show. You need to make it from your own heart, from yes. your own effort. And like I was starting to say, I, I, I'm not showing too much anymore because it's gotten so expensive. You know, to ship it and this right. and that. And all that. Right. But um, but I still like to create. And so, no one, I mean, the quilt, it's so funny. When you do an art quilt, anything like this, even your applique, you do it for you. And judges, I've judged a show up in um, Eureka. And so many people, uh, judges, that are not into art quilting will like for this one i'll give you an example on john's i got stitches are uneven and they have no idea that you're thread painting free motion they're gonna be uneven well i want them to be yes uneven. yeah i do i want that texture that's how i got the texture from the on his beard it's right three you know, They're stuff like right. that. So <laughs> the reason why I'm saying this is I don't want people to get discouraged because somebody else might come along and make a statement about your quill that you didn't intend it to be that way. Right. That's their interpretation, their perception. Right. And traditional and, quilters and tra traditional judges really a lot of times don't understand the difference between traditional quilting and art quilting. Exactly. Or the meaning behind it, you know? Right. Yeah, and like this particular quilt, my Vietnam quilt, um, it, the thing that happened to me was it, it got into Houston and didn't win anything, and that was okay, but I felt like I got best of show because while I was at the Cherrywood booth, um, this woman came up, all of a sudden everyone's yelling my name to go over to the booth, and this woman was looking for me. She had been a nurse for years and years, and she did three tours uh, in Vietnam. And she came to me with tears in my eyes and could not thank me. I still the goosebumps thinking of it to this day. And she couldn't thank me enough for making this quilt. Yeah. And my regret is, my only regret is I didn't get her name because I would have given her the quilt. That is how much she touched me. Yeah. So, you know, you can be, so you can't get discouraged by any of that. That's what I'm trying to say. You I, I to, full heartedly agree, Penny, that you're quilting yeah. for yourself, not for anybody else. That's right. And because you know what it's supposed to be. Right. And you need to satisfy you. And all my friends, everybody that knows me, um, and anybody that's watching that knows me, they know I do this. I don't do anything perfect the first time. I have to do everything twice. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
or I get it the way I want it as far as making a whole quilt. But um, this applique method just allows me to do so much. So I think it would be great if you could, um, you know, you've got the handouts and Beth, if you could make up a kit where they could use it in practice or maybe make um, like that Halloween one I was starting to tell you, I'm going to Terry Magic that whole panel and then I'm cutting out the individual designs. Uh -huh. and then I'm gonna applique it and then I'm taking um, this witch, there's like five witches and I'm gonna ink into it, embroider around it and then put um, all those little figures on that panel mm -hmm. separate. I'm going to cut it out of the squares, you know, like the hat and the skeleton and all this and that, and then applique those individually around the quilt. Right. Well, I'll, Penny, I will um, talk to you after we get off of this. I'll talk to you and we'll see about doing a class because we, um, if you still want to, to, to teach um, and we could put together some kind of a kit because I think that you have so many different techniques and for those who know me I love techniques because you might not necessarily want it for the project you're working on right now but then you're putting it in your toolbox so that you can use it on a yeah. later project you can never right. you can never learn too many techniques and a lot of times you'll learn a technique and then you'll tweak it to fit your own style that's right and, and something will come up, like something, you'll be doing something and you'll say, how can I do that? And you'll say, oh, I could do that. You know, and you don't realize it until right. it happens. Right, right. I, I, like, I'll buy a pattern. I'll start doing the pattern. And then about a quarter of the way through, I don't look at the pattern anymore. And I, I make what I want. Yes. But it gives me kind of like... Um, a, a running star. Right. And go into my own direction. My daughter, Kenny, and I have designed so many quilts together. We'll say, let's make something. And God bless her, she'll do all the cutting out for me. And I mean, she sews like Miss Speed Deepen. Yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and Peggy will come, and the three of us will be sewing, and 90% of the time, she's done, and we're still just putting things together. But it's okay, because she helps you. Yeah. <laughs> she helps you catch up. So, and she's uh, also a fast, accurate cutter, so uh, she'll, we have her actually help cut, too. <laughs> yeah. So, it's always but, good, Timmy, to have a young one in the crowd. <laughs> and, and and they can carry your suitcases too. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but it, it, it's just fun to do, and you know I I don't want to get into doing a trunk show for everybody. Just go to my website and you'll see some of the stuff that you can do with this technique. And I taught for Beth. I taught uh, portraiture thread painting mm -hmm. up at. Tahoe um, at one of our retreats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had a wonderful time. And those girls did fantastic. Right. Absolutely fantastic. I was so impressed with everybody. And, um, but that thread painting takes at least four days. Right. To really, you know, because when you start out doing a thread painting portrait, it looks pretty ugly. And if, if you don't keep going, I'll have, it's going to, you know, you'll get discouraged. Right, but, right. Um, all my thread paintings look ugly. When I did this one, it looked terrible until I worked at it and worked at it and worked at it and worked at it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Plus, my husband, I've done in every medium. I've done them in pastel. I've done them in ink. I've done them in thread. I've done them in fabric. <laughs> I've done, I made a doll of them. You know? <laughs> right, right. Thank you, Kimmy. So for those of you who are watching, this is Penny Barger. She lives in um, California, and her website is Penny Barger, all one word, P-E-N-N-I-B-A-R-G-E-R.com. Yes. And so I think that's about it, right, Penny? That's it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank, 
thank you for recording us. Oh, no, thank you for joining us. And I will post the handouts on the Fabric Chicks Stitch Along. So if you're not a member of that little group, which is on the left-hand side of our Facebook page, um, just go and ask to join, and we'll pop you in there. And that's where everybody kind of shares their information and gives you advice on your projects and all that good stuff. Um, and yeah. We and if anybody has any questions, mm -hmm. okay, uh, they can um, at the next at your next live show. Yes, you, you do it. They can ask that question. Okay, perfect. You know, or, or they could email me, and my email is p e n n p a s t e l at charter dot net. Perfect. So okay. Anybody, any kind of questions or any, right. anything to help them with, I'd be more than happy to do that. Perfect. And then Penny and I will work together to get a kit together and maybe a class and all that good stuff. All right. Thanks for joining us today. And we'll see you on Friday at noon for our live celebration right here on, on Fabric Chicks Facebook Live at noon. See us.